Okay, I think it's time we get this show on the road. Uh, welcome everybody to our third Meraki Quarterly for 2018. Uh, I'm speaking to you today from a slightly cloudy but still very nice and warm London town. It's beautiful here. It's been a fantastic week, uh, apart from the England result, but we'll let that go. We're not here to talk about football. Uh, we've got a very exciting hour, packed as always, with lots of updates for you across the Meraki portfolio. Uh, so we'll get things started in just a moment. I just want to quickly call out uh, the image that you can see in front of you here. This was actually submitted by uh, one of our big fans on Twitter, and you can see here uh, this isn't actually photoshopped. It actually took a Meraki gnome to Hawaii, to the black sand beach, and that is a real sea turtle right there in the boom image. And if you'd like to see your image on the front cover of the Meraki Quarterly next time we do this, uh, then please get in touch. You can find me at Meraki Simon on Twitter. Okay, uh, let's get on to the uh, a quick recap of some of the key uh, tenets of the Meraki Quarterly. Uh, first of all, this one is slightly different from our regular uh, webinar program. So we are here talking really to established customers and partners. If you are brand new to Meraki, obviously welcome. We have fantastic to have you with us today. Uh, you may find some of this to be a little bit over your head if you are brand new. Uh, what we really want to be doing here is updating folks who are already very familiar with the portfolio. So by all means, please stay with us. and We'd be very happy to, uh, to have you along. Uh, if you do find it overwhelming, then we do have some introductory webinars. There's a whole bunch that you can pick from on our website at meraki.cisco.com forward slash webinars. I also want to stress that this is a retrospective. So what we do here is we look back over what Meraki has been busy doing over the past calendar quarter with the aim of helping everybody to keep up to date. We have so many updates at Meraki, uh, so many regular things that we need to keep communicating. So that's really the purpose of this webinar is to give us an all an opportunity to level up and make sure that we understand exactly what's going on with our portfolios. Now the presenter, presenter lineup, as it says, mostly are coordinated by Uh, but we also have guest speakers today. We've got a couple of guest speakers who are joining us to, uh, to cover off various different sections, so we'll be hearing from them very soon. Once again, I want to stress, this is a roadmap-free zone. We definitely do encourage you to ask questions, and you can use the Q&A panel right here in WebEx to get those questions coming to us. Uh, we will do our best to keep up with those. We're all logged into WebEx so that we can uh, try to keep up with the questions that are coming in. And obviously, I'll share some of those questions with you all towards the end of the hour. But I do want to stress that we reserve the right to ignore any questions that relate to futures or roadmaps at Meraki. I know you're going to ask them anyway, but I promise you that we have uh, uh, so much content to get through here. I think there's plenty to keep you entertained. OK, so I think with that, we will uh, we'll move on. And so let's get on to the first update. And to, we're going to hand things over to Melissa, who's going to take us through our mobility manager. All right, thanks so much, Simon. So we have a few quick updates on the systems manager side to go over today. First and foremost, across Meraki, we've been working really hard at, at compliance with the general data protection regulations in Europe. So if you are one of our EU-based customers, take a look at our GDPR website at meraki.com to learn about how to use the API for this. And along that sort of privacy strain, we've also been working on some global um, changes in dashboard for privacy settings. First and foremost, the ability to disable the command line tool across a network or a network organization. You can also, for any new networks, some of the more sensitive features like remote desktop, Silent remote desktop, screenshot, and command line are automatically disabled by default now. Those can be re-enabled if you'd like. And command line commands pushed either through the live tool or on a client page within Systems Manager are now all logged in the organization event log. We also released this post-purchase training program as well. So any new purchases of, with a minimum of 200 Systems Manager licenses as of March 1st, 2018, are now eligible for this. This includes either a two or four hour call depending on the purchase threshold. That call is supported by a systems manager trainer. These are our expert systems manager and support engineers. 
and any eligible customers will be contacted by this team within 30 days of the purchase. If you're interested and want to learn more about this, definitely reach out to your Meraki sales rep to get started. We also just recently hosted a customer webinar with one of our schools in the Bay Area with Moreland School District down in Campbell, California. I know this is a really big time for schools who are running proof of concepts and trials for um, mobile device management um, now that school is out. So if you're interested in learning more about how a school used systems manager to deploy over 13,000 iPads and Apple devices in their environment, the recording of this session is available on our Meraki YouTube channel. And of course, we do have free trials available with a full subject matter expert assistance throughout that trial period for anyone who's looking to get started. Lastly, we've been working on a lot of UI enhancements on a number of different pages in Systems Manager. You, you might have seen changes to our apps page, our settings page, and particularly the tags page. This is a newer page that's been made available for all organizations recently. This is a place where you can go to see all of the different tags associated with devices. These are static tags and group or policy AD, uh, Active, Direct Active Directory integrated tags, and security policy tags. In Dashboard, you're able to see all of the different configuration profiles and settings, applications and devices associated with each tag or group. So this is a really great way to see how all of your tags and devices are currently being organized. Um, and if you have any feedback on these pages or on these UI enhancements, we'd love to learn more. Next up, we have Sarah Lynn covering our MZ product updates. Thanks, Melissa. Hi, everyone. My name is Sarah Lynn. I work with the MV team, and I'm going to be talking to you about what we've been working on over the last quarter. So what have we been working on? Uh, if you've been following MV, you know we did a big launch in January. Uh, we came out with a lot of new features that quarter, and since then we've been doing a lot of UI enhancements to make your and your customers' MV life experience so much easier. Uh, we added sensor crop on the MV12, uh, and we kind of like to think of this as like a digital zoom, but better since there's no loss in resolution. Uh, we take advantage of the full capability of the MV12 sensor, uh, and it allows you to select a certain area of the screen to uh, quote unquote zoom in without actually losing any of the pixel information. Um, so you'll be able to see a smaller area still in 1080p. Uh, with the MV12, so it gives you a lot of flexibility, even with the MV12's fixed lens. We've also added screenshots uh, with timestamps. Uh, so you can see we've got an example there. There's a timestamp up on the corner of the screenshot. Uh, so any image that you export with the screenshot tool and dashboard now has the watermark with the date and time, similar to uh, what we have on our video exports which is gonna make it quicker and easier to share evidence uh, and information with others and keep track of where and when uh, that screenshot was taken. Uh, another big update uh, based on a lot of our customer feedback was the increased uh, tiles on the video wall along with adaptive bit rate. Uh, so now, as you can see on the screen here, you can add up to 16 video feeds to a single video wall. So if you've got a lot of areas you need to watch it once, you have the ability to do that. Um, and also, because when you're watching a lot of video at once, there are uh, bandwidth concerns, uh, we now have adaptive bit rate. It's in public beta, uh, but what it does is actually reduce the bandwidth required to stream larger video walls to make better use of the bandwidth. And what's happening here is when you have this many screens, the uh, each of the individual video walls or videos is so small um, that there is not necessarily the need to stream them in the same resolution as you would if you were looking at one video wall. So when we're, or sorry, one video. So we actually will reduce uh, the resolution of the video feed. We don't reduce uh, the recording uh, or what we're recording in. And if you do select one video wall, it will go back to the same high resolution feed. This is just to give you more flexibility and make better use of bandwidth when viewing large video walls. And now kind of for our, uh, our PSA, 
If you want to participate in public betas, you have the ability to turn this on. You can go to network wide general, try beta firmware and set it to yes. But we want to do let you know that this setting will enroll all devices in that network, not just MVP cameras, in any active public beta programs. Um, so you want to make sure that you're okay with that before you do it. But it will allow you to test out new features, help us tweak them, provide feedback uh, to make your experience even better. Now, one of the last uh, UI updates here we have is on motion search. So if any of you are familiar with motion search, you select an area where you want to look for motion and we return a bunch of video results. Sometimes it's only a couple and it's easy to sort through, but sometimes you have several results. Um, and this may seem like a uh, small thing, but it's hard to keep track of what you've watched and what you haven't watched. And so we made a tweak to make that a lot easier. So gray or grayed out video clips are things that have already been viewed. Uh, blue is the current clip that you're on. And black are video clips that you've not yet watched. So you will not lose track of where you are uh, in reviewing the video. And next up, we've got Meraki switching updates with James. Hello, everyone. My name is James Locus, and I'm the product marketing manager here at Meraki for switching. So let's get right in to a couple of quick updates. The first one, and perhaps the most significant, we have released the MS10 firmware update. And this is something that we spoke about at our last presentation. However, this is the uh, big unveil of this particular firmware upgrade. So do join me as we talk about its major pillars of security, efficiency, and resilience. So first, with security. So we have multi-host and multi-auth uh, authentication techniques. Uh, so for multi-host, uh, you have a single device which can authenticate on a port. And once that device authenticates, all other devices gain network access through that port. A good example would be if a person is using a laptop and they have a lot of VMs that they're working with for whatever reason, uh, once that person authenticates once, all the other VMs attached to that uh, computer going through that port uh, gain authentication access. So that really helps with the uh, maintained security as well as uh, ease of use uh, for that particular feature. And of course, uh, multi-authentication, which uh, has each device authenticating as you typically would uh, through a port. Next, we have IPv6 for ACL. And we believe that this highlights our continued progress moving toward the IPv6 standard with access control list. For efficiency, we have ECMP, which stands for, of course, Equal Cost Multipath, which lets the network choose multiple paths to route user traffic. So uh, a good example would be uh, if you are going between uh, point A and point B in your car and you're using your favorite navigation app, uh, and for whatever reason, in going from A to B, it routes you a way that's a little bit different than you would normally go, but it takes about the same time. Uh, that's essentially the same idea with ECMP, where the network utilizes multiple paths uh, to send traffic in different directions, as long as they are the same cost. We have STP and LAN anomaly detection, which is a feature on the dashboard which makes it easier to notice STP and physical link problems. STP, uh, of course, is something that is very important and you need to make sure that uh, no matter what happens, that you can actually find issues that uh, occur in convergence and uh, be aware of them. And finally, with resilience, so a uh, brief backstory uh, to this particular feature that we're about to get into. Uh, so a broadcast storm is when uh, messages loop endlessly uh, between switches. And to aid in this, uh, we have enhanced storm control, which limits broadcast traffic on a port as a precaution. Uh, this means that the user can set a particular limit uh, where uh, broadcast traffic uh, on a particular network will not go beyond a certain amount. And if you would like to find out more, uh, please visit our blog where we have a lot of other improvements uh, that we did not have time to get into today. As well, uh, please visit our documentation page uh, to find out more. And today we'll end uh, with Meraki APIs for switching. So Meraki APIs offer a management flexibility which can be adapted to many common network tasks. 
uh, for example, with the automation of tasks when adding new organizations, admins, or networks. With network monitoring, where you can build your own dashboard for a store managers or, or field techs. And finally, for management, where you can on and off for new employees, uh, for example, with a telework setup with ease. And uh, Meraki Switching uh, attempted to promote uh, APIs for switching, uh, and we did this at Cisco Live US, uh, working with DevNet, where we distributed over 700 switches to help developers create new applications for our switch line uh, using Meraki APIs. So if you would like to learn more, please visit meraki.io, and uh, there you can learn how to be a part of the community and potentially contribute to the ecosystem. Thank you. And next up, we have Amea. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Amea. Uh, I'm the product specialist for the MR team at Meraki. And uh, I would uh, like to welcome everyone. And uh, in the last quarter, we launched four new access points and six new antennas to support them. Uh, we also launched a few different features, such as wireless help and RF profile. Uh, so just want to give you a refresh on that. Uh, <clears throat> we have also updated our Air Marshal page. So as you can see at the new page, like this is currently active on all dashboard networks. Uh, this is a new UI that we have brought. This is basically going to help you to simplify the way Air Marshal works and to configure the Air Marshal. Uh, we'll just go in a demo for this uh, in a few seconds for the Air Marshal because it's just like there are so many settings and options. It will be much better for me to show you actually how it works. <clears throat> Further, uh, I would also like to reiterate that the RF profile that was launched, we have improvised that uh, in many different ways. So now it's much more better in terms of UI and you can actually have bulk settings pushed on multiple APs now. We have increased that limit as well on the APs, so it makes much more scalable for a large deployment as well. Also, we uh, there was a request that was there when we cloned different networks, the R profiles, uh, we wanted to clone them as well, so we added that support to the current RF profiles page as well. Again, this is also included for all the dashboard networks that are out there running. Um, for the, uh, the wireless help feature, uh, this we have improvised this as well. The UI has been improved since its launch and we have improved our alerting in a much more better way on the wireless help. Uh, let me just go you through the demo and I'll just quickly run through the different settings. Okay, so this is basically our demo network for our SF office that we have. Um, so for the air marshal. So as you can see, we have added an options for adding a white listing rule and a blacklisting rule. So basically what this is gonna give you is gonna give you an option to blacklist any SSID based on its MAC address, its keywords, or if it exactly matches. So this could be a great use case of this could be like this is a blacklist and then whitelist as well. So a great use case for this could be if you want, if you're setting up Google Homes in your environment and you want to make sure that the Google Home SSID is not being classified as rogue by Air Marshal, you can have whitelist just the name Google and you can have that whitelisted. <clears throat> so this is the new Air Marshal functionality and Again, all the features that we had earlier, the rogue SSID spoof, malicious broadcast, again, have their own tab. So we have revamped the UI and we have added a few more functionalities over there. Also, just uh, wanted to show you the wireless help feature as well, also is gonna be there. And uh, right now, since this is a, a demo network, we don't have much information, but if you go into a dashboard network, you can actually see all the information regarding your wireless help. So basically this is uh, just a revamp of what we have. Uh, we have upgraded this functionality. Um, let me know if you have any questions in the Q and A box and happy to answer them. Uh, next up we have David from SDBAN and Security. Hello everybody. Uh, this is David from the product marketing team at Meraki. So leading off today, I wanted to talk about a couple of recent events uh, that have occurred in the last few months 
the first one is uh, VPN filter malware. And what this was is uh, there was a malware that was detected by Cisco's uh, team of threat researchers called Talos. Uh, if you're not familiar, there are 250 of, or more of the world's top threat researchers. And Talos uh, released a blog post in May <clears throat> highlighting a variety of different products that were uh, affected by this malware. Uh, the malware had the ability to allow for theft of website credentials, uh, monitoring Modbus uh, SCADA protocols for industrial PLCs and industrial environments, as well as uh, rendering lots of infected devices unusable. Uh, the VPN uh, filter malware also has the ability um, to cut off potential internet access to hundreds of thousands of victims worldwide. And that was highlighted in, a, in this blog post uh, from Talos. Um, and unfortunately, these affected devices are owned by businesses and individuals. Um, and these innocent people could be mistakenly attributed to malicious behavior despite actually being the victims. Um, in June, Talos updated the blog post with an additional attack stage uh, as a part of this malware and additional suppliers and models that were affected. Um, but the devices affected were definitely vulnerable because they didn't have IPS installed or have any malware protection. And luckily for those using uh, Meraki MX devices with advanced security uh, IPS and AMP enabled were automatically safe from this attack. So there was nothing that users of the Meraki MX uh, with advanced security, AMP and IPS enabled had to do. The updates were immediately delivered by Cisco Talos's team. Uh, the IPS rule sets and AMP rule sets were, were automatically updated via the cloud. Uh, we did put out a blog post um, for those who did not have advanced security enabled, maybe there were a few more ways that you could protect yourself from this malware by uh, blocking malicious URLs or IP addresses using the Meraki MX. So you can read the blog post either from Talos or from Meraki for more. So it's just to highlight um, that the Meraki MX has, has powerful security technologies integrated into it like Snort IPS and advanced malware protection. Um, there are lots of integrations uh, to the Meraki MX from the Cisco suite of security products, and we continue to work on those integrations in, in interoperabilities as well. So the Meraki MX is an investment in your IT security as, as we continue to work on more of those. So another recent event was uh, towards the end of June, there was a major outage um, that affected business and residential internet. Uh, this happened uh, due to cut fiber lines and, and major service providers were affected. Um, and downtime like this can cost businesses quite a bit of money. Uh, either you're a retail store without internet access uh, for your customers, a healthcare customer with mission critical traffic or any other business um, who gets hurt by lost productivity, and you can see some of the numbers there, uh, a lot of market reports showing that downtime can cost businesses quite a bit of money. And this is not a new phenomenon. Um, in early June, there were several nationwide outages as well. And on average, businesses have around five uh, downtimes per year. Uh, the solution here um, is just a reminder that the Meraki MX offers uh, several ways to guard yourself against things like this um, and downtimes. One is dual uplink support. So we have SD-WAN capabilities in the MX where you can fail over from one broadband line or, or, or MPLS line to another, as well as shared traffic between the two. Uh, the other is 3G and 4G failover. So as, as LTE becomes a lot more widespread today than the last few years, uh, a lot of customers are using this capability to add redundancy and reliability to their MX deployments. And then we have warm, warm spare failover uh, where no additional license is needed. You can just buy an additional MX and copy the template over to that spare unit um, and the MX will fail over. Uh, we also have data center high availability where you can use the MX to fail over an entire data center if your prim primary data center goes down. Um, and then another one that, that people may not know about, which is Meraki Now, um, an additional license that you can buy to have on-site hardware replacements within two hours. 
So lots of different ways um, that customers have been mitigating downtime and this June uh, nationwide outage was a perfect example of that. And then we have a call for uh, BGP beta users. So the Meraki engineering team is working hard to provide uh, BGP functionality to improve redundancy, symmetry, load balancing on your networks. Um, via active active uh, data center design, BGP traffic engineering, route filtering, um, and there's features as a part of this deployment, uh, like, like verbose logging and route table updates that we have uh, as a part of the BGP beta. So some potential users for this could be customers who have multiple MXs deployed, uh, multiple internal data centers, or customers um, for which limited or no downtime is incredibly important. Uh, so there's a few ways that you could sign up if you want to uh, screenshot this page and type in that really complicated link. That's one way that you could do it, or you can contact your Meraki sales rep um, or Meraki support and ask for the BGP beta. And then the last slide here is uh, we'll be at a few upcoming events if you want to come chat with us and see what uh, Meraki has going on. So uh, Black Hat uh, in early August will be in Las Vegas, and then we have Cybersecurity Chicago coming up in the end of September, and IP Expo London in October. And the MX team will be at those events to chat with you and discuss uh, new products and features that will be coming for you. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Simon. All right. Thank you, David. Uh, thanks, to everybody uh, who's new to uh, the Meraki Quarterly, by the way. We've got a few new presenters today. Super excited to have you uh, joining the show as well. Uh, I'm just going to give you guys a quick update on Meraki Insight. This is a product that we launched uh, back at the end of January. And a really exciting uh, step for Meraki, really focused around network assurance and trying to help us to better troubleshoot and understand what's happening on the pathway for our applications from the cloud to the, through the wide area network and to the endpoint as well. This is really fundamental for, uh, for helping to improve uh, the quality of the end user experience, which is a big focus. Uh, for us here at Meraki, of course, uh, we want to provide a very redundant, a very redundant, reliable, well-performing network. But really, it's that performance and how the end users perceive it that's so important for us. So Meraki Insight, I think, does that extremely well. Uh, so all I want to do here is to show you a couple of things that we've done since our last uh, Meraki quarterly update. If you are f um, familiar with uh, this product, then definitely we can uh, we can uh, update you on that in various different ways. So first of all, scalability. We've increase the ability for Meraki Insight to cover larger uh, organizations. So now we can support uh, orgs with as many as 1,000 networks configured in them. What that means is that you could have literally one uh, probing MX in every single one of 1,000 different locations, all providing updates to a common uh, Meraki Insight instance so that you can see uh, how performance is building up over time across a very large number of different uh, locations. There's also been a lot of work under the hood around uh, accuracy. So we want to make sure that the information we're providing is as targeted and accurate as possible. And there's a couple of reasons for that. First of all, we rely on that data to help us to uh, support a feature we call anomaly detection, which is where we put in uh, plain English language terms into the Meraki dashboard, things like uh, we've noticed your server is you know, running at 10% uh, over regular capacity. Uh, and that sort of easy language is, uh, just makes life so much easier and avoids us having to, uh, to keep going back, back and forth to things like event logs. And that's the other point here is that's av avoiding the need to go out to uh, any syslog or event log data to find out really what's going on in your network. As we improve the accuracy of Meraki Insight, uh, you'll find the value of the product just gets more and more. And we've already had a number of customers telling us that this is really a product which pays for itself very quickly uh, in terms of being able to very fast, uh, very, very quickly uh, identify uh, any particular problems that are occurring on the wide area network or with the servers that are hosting the applications that they rely on for their business. With more and more businesses moving apps to the cloud, uh, the value of this just keeps on growing over time. We've also put some focus into uh, the user interface and the filtering so that we can provide uh, better information, again, to uh, users of this product. 
So over time, as with any Meraki product, it's just going to be improving. And a lot of this is based on the feedback that you provide us all the time. And so don't, don't ever forget, please, that Make-A-Wish box in the bottom right-hand corner of every Meraki dashboard page. Uh, that is really what tells us uh, what's on your mind and how you think we can improve this product. Uh, we've got some great brains at Meraki, but we certainly don't think of everything. Uh, and we've had some fantastic suggestions that have come from our customers over the years uh, that have helped us to refine the products that you see here. Uh, last but not least, uh, we've also done some changes to support compliance with the GDPR in uh, Europe. So that's obviously hugely important for uh, the region I'm speaking to you from today, uh, where some very stringent uh, privacy rules have come into, into force, which we need to be respectful of. Uh, and so the products now are better aligned to be able to do that. Uh, Meraki has done a lot of work around the GDPR, so if you are uh, unsure, if you haven't had enough emails about this already, uh, then you can absolutely go to our website and find some details. Uh, we have a dedicated page that explains what we've done there for the European Union. And then lastly, uh, for this particular product, uh, we're, going, we're going to just quickly look at a UI change that we've made. Uh, so this is how things looked when we launched the product. So look on the left-hand side. Uh, you had a performance score with a percentage uh, for each of these different applications. Now, just bear in mind that what we're trying to do at Meraki all the time is to think carefully about the, uh, the user interface that you work with every day, and we want to refine that as much as we can, make it as simple and intuitive as we, as we possibly can. Uh, so based on some of the feedback that we got, we made a couple of changes. Uh, so now, if you look at the same page, you go into Meraki Insights, uh, then this is what you will see immediately your eyes are drawn to uh, not just a, a score, which is kind of arbitrary. 98% doesn't tell you a great deal. I think this is a way more valuable uh, screen to look at. It immediately tells me, for example, for that first application there, uh, that it's the server that is likely to be the problem here. And then, of course, I can dive in and look at that in more detail. But with Meraki Insight, we have the ability to change thresholds for all of these different web applications. Uh, so if you do find that you're getting too many crosses, uh, then you can always go in and tweak that so that it's, uh, it's looking good and healthy again. Of course, the value is in the data that it actually gives you. And as with any other computerized product, it's garbage in, garbage out. It, it will basically be more valuable to you uh, the more you tweak and refine it uh, to make sure it fits your own needs. Okay, so that's all I had for uh, Meraki Insight. Just a quick mention that we do now have, we've run our first Meraki Insight webinar. Uh, so really excited to have that up and running. If you are interested in learning more about that product uh, and would like to give it a try, we definitely would encourage you to, to come along and sign up for that. Uh, I don't think we have one scheduled right now, but we definitely will be working on that and getting a new one in place very soon. Uh, so just head over to meraki.com slash webinars when you're ready to sign up for one of those. Okay, so that is everything that I wanted to get through uh, in the Meraki quarterly today. And we have uh, done this in a very impressive time, just under 40 minutes. Uh, thank you very much indeed for, uh, for sticking with us through this session. Things go pretty fast on the quarterly, and we've had a lot of information thrown at you, as always here. Uh, this, I think, is what makes the quarterly such an interesting uh, webinar to go through. Now, what we're going to try and do for you is answer some of the questions that have come in. Uh, this is always the most fun and exhilarating part of the quarterly uh, for us here as presenters, uh, going through the many, many questions that you have all sent us. We've received quite a few questions uh, today. So what I want to do is just go through that list, uh, see if we can get some of those questions answered for you. And I may well call on the folks in the room uh, who, by the way, are in San Francisco. I'm the only one who's in London. Uh, everybody else is over there on the West Coast, eight time zones away. Uh, and um, so we want to uh, bring them in as well if we want to get some very specific answers. So bear with me a second uh, while I just scroll through the list here. And if you do have any last minute questions, do go into that Q&A panel and ask them now. Okay, so first question here uh, came up around the endpoint management product that we looked at, systems manager. Uh, so there was a question there about um, silent remote desktop on Windows 10. Uh, so remote desktop is included on uh, for Windows 10 now, and it can also be disabled if that's a requirement. Okay, so got a question here about sort of the, the capacity on our different MX models with uh, internet service providers off offering faster and faster 
uh, internet service connections, then obviously it's important that a product that's trying to protect our local area network, like the MX appliance, is able to keep up with that. Uh, and so we really do try very hard at Meraki to try and keep up with this, not only in terms of hardware, but also in terms of our advice that we give you. So there are so many different features on the MX. And if you, obviously, if, as you'd expect, every single one of those features is working the CPU in some way. So the more of those features you've got turned on, uh, the more kind of impact you're going to see. And that's why we, we need to think very carefully about the scaling and the choice you make uh, for your security appliance when you're first considering buying those. So we do have a sizing guide available, and I definitely recommend you take a look at that. It's going to give you an indication, and, and really I think what we always recommend at Meraki is that you actually just try it. We offer free trials for all of our products and solutions. So really the best thing to do is if you think you need a, a more powerful box, you could just slot one in, give it a try, and see if that actually solves any challenges you may be having. Uh, so we had a question around what APIs are available, and uh, definitely recommend that you take a look. There's a website which uh, we probably should add to the quarterly, actually, so we can get an update on that as well. That's something to think about for next time around. Uh, but if you head over to a website we've created, which is meraki.io, so meraki.io, that's the home for our API story. What we've done there is build out uh, a really interesting website with lots of different solutions to spark your imagination. Uh, you can either uh, take your pick from solutions we've already created with some of our software partners, uh, or alternatively, uh, you can even just go ahead and start coding yourself and just making use of uh, Meraki APIs directly. Uh, we have a number of them available to you, and you can read more about those on that website. Okay, bear with me. I'm heading on down the list. A question, I think, around uh, ECMP on the switch and whether it's like Trill. I don't even know if that question will mean anything to a lot of people attending today. Uh, it is a uh, the answer to the question is not quite. Uh, it's a very interesting uh, pr uh, uh, protocol Trill. If you're interested in learning about uh, switch large scale switch networks, uh, a very interesting one for sure. But it is different, certainly, to ECMP, and I think you'll find that uh, bears out when you have a look at the documentation. Uh, so we had a question asking about uh, blog link for new switch firmware. So James went through the uh, the updates that we are putting up for uh, Switch 10, which is a very exciting release for us in terms of uh, stability, but also new features as well, as we covered. Uh, and if you want to get a recap on those, you can find those on a blog post that uh, James put up uh, recently, and that is on our website at meraki.cisco.com forward slash blog. Uh, just do a search in there for James, and you should be able to find very quickly all the posts that he's done, uh, and that will get you going on a recap for MS-10. Okay, so we had a question around uh, the MX line and um, Cisco uh, Stealth Watch. There are a number of different Cisco technologies that are embedded into the MX, uh, which is one of the real um, value adds for that product line. Uh, so you do need a license for this one, but it is included. And uh, definitely recommend you take a look at the uh, the MX uh, website, uh, the, the subpage, if you like, on the meraki.com website. There's a lot of detail in there about some of the Cisco features we've had built in. Uh, and as David alluded to uh, when he covered the MX section, you know, some of the work that we do continuously with our friends at uh, the Talos group within Cisco uh, helps ensure that all Meraki customers are covered uh, as expediently as possible. Keeping on going down the list here. Yeah, so there's a, an interesting question here, which is definitely one that I know the industry is thinking about at the moment, and that's around uh, SSL websites. Uh, one of the things that Meraki is particularly good at, uh, have been for a long time, is pattern recognition, which enables us to, uh, to actually block, for example, using a firewall, uh, even when uh, servers, services are uh, encrypted with HTTPS. So, for example, you can test this for yourself with something like Facebook. Uh, if you put in a Facebook block on the, uh, on the firewall, uh, you'll see that we're able to actually prevent traffic from getting through, uh, and that's because we've been able to recognize this type of traffic through pattern matching. And this is the kind of approach that the industry is taking to solve this problem, and it, it is an area that our engineers are uh, focusing on as well at the moment to make sure that we keep uh, as close to the uh, to the market as possible on that particular capability. 
So I had a question around uh, Meraki Now. This is the high-speed swap-out service that we have available to all Meraki customers. Uh, you can find details on that uh, on our website in the library. There is a document that uh, actually covers this uh, and explains that service in more detail. So uh, a very important question to reiterate here again around MX and reliability. It's one of the things I think we've done really well with licensing on the MX. And that is that if you do set it up in a high availability uh, setup, uh, so you have two MXs sitting side by side in a warm spare configuration, uh, you only need one license. In other words, it's one per active MX. Uh, and so that's the way we, we handle that one. Obviously a significant uh, cost saving through that approach. As always, we've got a few roadmap questions, and I love getting them. They, they give us a good idea of what's on your mind. There are some old favorites in here, like AnyConnect, which is definitely one we're very well aware of. Uh, IPv6 is another one, but uh, as James mentioned, we're steadily chipping away at IPv6, adding more and more uh, capability there all of the time. Uh, a question around BGP, and that's one of the new protocols that we have available uh, on the MX. So if you are interested in running BGP for your, uh, typically for your wide area network deployments, then uh, you can definitely go ahead and do that with the MX. That's available for you to do trial on our beta code now. Uh, for the switches, I think it's best to think of the equivalent protocol being OSPF, uh, which is very similar and is really more optimized for use on a local area network. Okay. So we do have a good question, a very valid question here from Andrew around uh, Meraki Insight firmware, uh, you're, you're absolutely right to say that right now Meraki Insight is operating on uh, beta firmware for the MX. We are working as fast as we possibly can to get that into stable code. We want that to be uh, available to more and more uh, Meraki customers. And of course, we understand with a product like the MX, uh, you're going to want to as much as possible be on stable code there. Completely fair and understood. Uh, we are um, fully aware of that. We wanted to get the product out uh, to customers who really do see high value in that particular solution. And we're certainly getting a lot of valuable feedback to suggest it's making a difference for customers already. Uh, but our focus very much in our engineering team for the Meraki Insight is getting that onto stable code so that you all uh, who are pre have a preference for stable code can take uh, full advantage of that as soon as possible. A uh, common question we often get uh, worth touching on very quickly, which is, will there be a link to the recording? Yes, there absolutely will. Uh, we always post these up on YouTube. It's not information we need to keep private, so we will be happy to share that information far and wide, uh, and you should find that up on YouTube later on today. Uh, interesting question around how to enable Meraki Insight in the dashboard. So if you are new to this product, you may be wondering, uh, what exactly this is. It's not a physical product. So it is actually a software capability uh, which requires something that we call a collector for all the data that we use for that insight. Uh, and so it appears in the dashboard as a separate product, uh, which is how we actually go to market with that as well. Uh, but the reason why we've sep separated it out from the MX is that we think of the MX as just the first collector for at Meraki Insight. There's no technical reason why that capability should be limited to the MX. Obviously, for our existing MX customers, it's a very logical uh, addition to their Meraki deployment. But we do want to make it available to customers who have a preference for or have an established uh, security appliance, maybe by a different vendor or perhaps another security box from Cisco, uh, and they still want to be able to take advantage of Insight. So that's the reason why we break that out. If you do want to uh, take Insight for a spin, you can do so very easily by contacting our trial team. Uh, so just reach out to your regular Meraki contact uh, and we can get you set up as quickly as we can. Uh, so a good question here around whether we can track applications hosted in a private cloud. As long as those can be accessed uh, from the local area network, which would be pretty important if you were trying to, uh, trying to monitor them, uh, then yes, you can include them in uh, Meraki Insight as well. So this all works on sort of round trip delay uh, and response times from servers. And again, as I said earlier on, more and more of us are moving our uh, critical mission, critical servers from on-site data centers off to cloud-based services, be they public or private. And that's the exact reason we wanted to introduce Meraki Insight to help 
uh, optimize the performance of those environments to keep that end user experience as smooth as possible. Okay, getting a little bit lower down the list now. I've still got a lot of questions in here, so bear with me. Interesting question about uh, integration of management tools. Some of you uh, may be using uh, regular Cisco products as well as Meraki, and so DNA Center is uh, very much an interesting product to be looking at at this point in time uh, for those hybrid deployments. Uh, it certainly does give you uh, already the ability to take advantage of Meraki API, so you can do things like monitoring and basic configuration of uh, Meraki technology, and then you can always hop into the Meraki dashboard uh, for additional configuration level if needed. Uh, but also, as far as integration with other tools is concerned, we do have a lot of customers who use things like SolarWinds, for example. Uh, we do support SNMP, and so you can integrate quite nicely with those third parties if you're managing uh, multi-vendor solutions. Okay, keeping on going down the list here. Uh, we did have a question here asking whether it's going to be France or Croatia on Sunday. Uh, obviously, very important question. Uh, we'll be tuning in. Uh, I'm not going to make any predictions. It's, uh, it's, uh, I tried doing that yesterday, and as an English person, that didn't go so well. Uh, so I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to just avoid doing that today. Uh, I will leave that to your imagination. I hope you enjoy the game. Uh, looks like at least one person is trying to get hold of a uh, switch for testing purposes. Uh, definitely want to make sure that we get that uh, taken care of for you. Our sales team obviously uh, very busy at this time of the year uh, at Meraki, uh, but we are uh, very keen to get, up, uh, get these products into your hands. So um, please do bear with us and we'll get that to you as soon as we can. Okay, I think I'll just take one more question and then we'll wrap things up. So let me pick, a, pick something interesting. One of the things that's nice about going through all these questions is uh, how engaged you all are. I really do appreciate this because, you know, like I said, we, we're able to obviously keep a copy of all the Q&A that comes in, uh, and it's great to go and recap that and see what kind of things you're all thinking of. So I really appreciate your engagement uh, during the session today. Okay, I think, I think probably what I'll do here is uh, call it a day. There's a lot of sort of questions that have come in right at the last minute, and uh, I don't think we've got time to really do justice to all of those. So apologize if we didn't get your question asked, uh, answered today. If, if it is a pressing question for you, then please do reach out to your Meraki contact. Uh, we'll do our best to, uh, to get it answered for you as quickly as we can through the usual channels. All right, so time to wrap things up. Thank you very much indeed for taking time out of your day to join us. Uh, we really do appreciate your uh, involvement in the Meraki Quarterly. And you can, as I said, right at the top of this, contribute to the Meraki Quarterly now uh, by sending us a picture to use on the front cover slide. We'll, we'll choose, we'll have a little contest internally, and we'll decide which one we want to go with. And that's what we'll headline with uh, when we do this next time around. Just a little bit of fun. Uh, and of course, if you want to keep communicating with us, the community is the place to do that. And you can see uh, the link to that on the page right there in front of you. From uh, those of us here in London and the team over in San Francisco, thank you once again. We hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and we look forward to welcoming you back in a quarter from now. Bye-bye for now.